today i am going to present a case of small ruminants in front of you this is basically a, go a case of goat related to a nervous disease a goat was presented at the clinic with a chief complaint of anorexia depression recumbency and drooling of saliva that started in the morning according to her owner she was perfectly fine in the last night but suddenly in the next morning she started showing all of these signs that include recumbency depression anorexia and drooling of saliva from oral cavity when i went for the physical examination of this goat i found that she was in sternal recumbency as you can see in this picture she is in sternal recumbency she was severely depressed and drooling saliva from her left commissure as you can see in this picture that saliva is rolling from her left commissure and accumulating on the floor and her left side uh, quarters were specifically hind quarters were also trembling and she was not able to move and was in recumbency was very emaciated and dehydrated because she has been anorectic from last 24 hours when i went for the physical examination of this goat i found that her temperature was 104.2 degree fahrenheit which is slightly elevated than the normal normal temperature is 103.5 heart rate was also slightly higher than normal and similarly respiration was also slightly higher means she was suffering from tachypnea pyrexia and tachycardia then moving towards her uh, when i checked her reflexes specifically manus reflex which is Uh, used for checking the integrity of eyesight when i checked her manus reflex she was not giving a positive manus reflex that indicates that she is suffering from blindness manus reflex is basically checked by waving the hand in front of the eye if she is blinking it it gives a result that she has intact integrity of eyesight if she is giving negative response to manus reflex it indicates that she is blind so basically in this case the manus reflex was negative so we can say that this goat is suffering from blindness and when i examine her oral cavity there was impaction of food or silage in the jaws and when i pinch the skin of her face she was not responsive it indicates that her motor supply has also damaged and one side and the ear and lips and eyelid and nasal cavity of left side they all were dropped on physical examination it indicates that mainly the left side of the animal is affected because there was trembling in the left side there was drooling from the left side there was blindness in the left side and there was dropping of eyelid ear and nose and lips of the left side so all the left side of animal was affected in this case so we can say that animal is suffering from unilateral paralysis unilateral paralysis of the face as well as rest of the body so on the basis of all these signs and symptoms and on the basis of history i diagnosed that this goat is suffering from listeriosis why i diagnosed this goat for listeriosis because all these signs are typical or clinical picture of listeriosis now i will explain that why all these signs are evident in listeriosis basically listeriosis is a disease of nervous system in this disease when animal eats silage there is a bacteria in silage which is known as listeria monocytogens when animal eats that silage that bacteria goes into the oral cavity and in oral cavity you know that there is a nerve which is called as trigeminal nerve it is present in the mandible and maxilla when bacteria goes into the oral cavity that bacteria travel on this nerve trigeminal nerve when this bacteria travel on this nerve it finally reaches at brain stem when this bacteria reaches brain stem it damages cranial nerve number 5 on which it was traveling along with 5 it also damages 7 and 8th nerve when all these three nerves are damaged their function will be impaired and animal will show characteristic signs and what will be these signs i will explain those signs as you can see on the right side of this image the cranial nerve number 5 which is trigeminal nerve this nerve is responsible for muscle of mastication when this nerve is damaged in listeriosis animal will not be able to chew or masticate his feed and that feed will be impacted in his jaws as you can see in this picture and when cranial nerve number 7 will be damaged seventh nerve is responsible for the maintenance of facial 
texture. When this nerve is damaged, animal will not be able to maintain his facial expressions. Its lips will be dropped. Its eyelid will be dropped. Its ear will be dropped. As you can see in this picture, its ear will has been drop, dropped down. Its nostrils has dropped down. Its lips has dropped down. So this is because of damage to seventh nerve. And when eighth nerve is damaged, eighth nerve is basically responsible, as you can see in this image, that eighth nerve is responsible for body balance. When animal... Uh, when this eighth nerve is damaged due to listeria, animal will not be able to maintain his balance and he will become ataxic. When animal become ataxic, it will not be able to maintain his body balance and he will start leaning against the walls in order to maintain the balance. So this is the reason that why these signs are uh, shown in listeriosis. Then I told already told you that hind limbs of the animal were also trembling in that specific case. What is the reason behind that trembling of case, uh, limbs? Basically, there are some long tracts present in the spinal cord and these long tracts arise from brainstem. When this brainstem is damaged due to listeriosis, these long tracts are also damaged. When these long tracts are damaged, because these long tracts control the movement of hind limbs and uh, rest of the body. When these tracts will be damaged, the hind limbs will not be able to move properly and they will start trembling. So this is the reason behind trembling of hind limbs in listeriosis. So depending upon all these signs, I diagnose this goat for ten, uh, listeriosis tentatively. And listeriosis is also commonly known as silage disease because the bacteria that is responsible for this disease grows very uh, excellently in silage. Then comes to our differential diagnosis that from which diseases we, sh uh, we should differentiate listeriosis. These diseases include uh, GID, which is also known as synorosis cerebralis or synorosis. In synorosis, we do not find uh, salivation. We have to differentiate listeria from meningitis. In meningitis, we do not find, again, there is no blindness in listeriosis. In poisoning, there is diarrhea and vomiting but there is no vomiting in listeriosis in tetanus there is saw horse posture and there are respiratory arrest but in listeriosis there is no respiratory arrest or no saw horse posture uh, and then in polio encephalomalacia basically you find uh, blindness but you do not find higher temperature but in listeria there is higher temperature hypovitaminosis a in hypovitaminosis a you do not find any signs of hind limb trembling or there is no sign of drooling of saliva uh, and in middle ear infection, again, you will not find a higher temperature pulse or respiration. And in sinusitis, you will see signs of respiratory system. So in, this is how you can differentiate all these diseases from listeriosis. Then comes the treatment of listeriosis. The listi uh, listeriosis is caused by listeria monocytogens and drug of choice for listeria monocytogens is penicillin G. And its dose rate is 22,000 international unit per kg. And we also have to administer any NSAID in order to control the fever and pain and the signs of inflammation in the brainstem. And we also inject dexamethasone, which is a steroid, which will prevent inflammation of the meninges that are surrounding the brainstem. It, and it also decreases the incidence of cerebral abscess. Uh, and finally, we also inject thiamine, which is a vitamin B1, and it is responsible for strengthening the um, function of those nerves which are damaged due to listeriosis. Then G, if penicillin is not available in your area or it is not working properly, then you can use some alternative antibiotics. These include oxytetracycline, sulfonamides, oxidil, and fluorenfenicol. Then I have here pasted a very good and very excellent treatment protocol of uh, listeriosis. And this has been taken from a very renowned book, which is known as PC Blood. Then comes toward the prognosis of listeriosis. If listeria has gone, if the case of listeria has gone in progressive stage, then the prognosis is grave because in progressive stages, the brain has damaged and recovery of brain is not possible in progressive stages. But if case is in early stages and we administer treatment in early stages properly, then animal can recover and give good prognosis. So this is all about listeriosis and this case. I hope that you will find this case very helpful while diagnosing any case of listeria and treating it accordingly. Thank you.